All right, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Today is Tuesday, June the 1st, 2021, and we actually have a fair amount of news uh, to report today, so let's jump right into it. So first off, um, this is all global news we'll be covering, by the way. Russia basically said, I believe it was the foreign minister, hinted at the fact that Russia is very strongly and actively looking at the fact that there may have been and still be having, uh, there still are human rights issues going on as it pertains to the January 6th event. Um, so this is interesting because Russia is using this as a strategical opportunity, it seems like, within the convict of the... Uh, the convent, if you will, of the United Nations to try and say, you know, we should slap a sanction on the United States of America in order to, you know, uh, say that the way in which they're arresting and treating certain people that were at the Capitol on January 6th as a humanitarian issue. I mean, look, if, if, if they think they actually have grounds to do this and this actually might stand, I'm very curious to see what would happen. Because again, things seem to be I don't want to say heating up per se, because again, we have to factor in what's really going on on the back end and the way that these countries work together for what's really happening behind the scenes as we discuss on the show as well. But I mean, it's interesting to see the the front end of things and the way that the puppet show sometimes um, <clears throat> conflates or falls into or merges into the back end of things. And this may in fact be one of them. This may be a little bit of, you know, Russia jabbing the US in the face, trying to take advantage of the opportunity. And if they follow through and if they get a legitimate, you know, know, uh, uh, concern through at the UN that the US is not treating their people, uh, their, their citizens correctly. This is going to be interesting to see. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with all of you. I'm, I'm quite curious. But again, we also have to understand the reality of the United Nations as well. The, the US, whether we like it or not, the US has very strong influence and control over the United Nations, not necessarily officially i mean yes but we all know on the back end of things how stuff really works right between the un and nato and things like that let's be honest with ourselves right the next thing is that israel is pulling back uh rolled back their top military general benny Gantz's comments about the associated press having coffee with hamas they still don't regret blowing up the media building that housed al jazeera and associated press there's a lot of debate as to whether or not hamas was hiding weapons under that building or you know certain things things like that, or if they had tunnels under the building or what have you, even the other reasons that the IDF gave, it's very skeptical. It's, it's very iffy, hard to say. I, it's not for me to say, because again, I actually tried to get a flight there uh, to report on the ground, uh, but it didn't end up happening. But um, again, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there, because the thing is, is that you see certain cases where it is, you know, the certain bombings were justified because later on the IDF showed proof, at least it seemed to show proof of where Hamas was hiding certain weapons. But then I will be honest too, at least from my perspective in the context that I have at this moment that I'm recording this, there were certain buildings that looked like they just dropped bombs on for, for no apparent reason. However, I say this carefully because again, I want to be very um, concise in the fact that I don't have the full story. So I'm not going to sit here all confident like, yeah, they did this, they did that. We're Remember, folks, we're going off of the things that we see, and we're also trying to call out the propaganda at the same time. So it is difficult. I, I will admit that um, 100%. The next thing is that, uh, just to switch the topic a bit, eBay sellers can no longer use PayPal because eBay is going to do its own payment system now. I mean, hey, sure, if they want to drop PayPal, PayPal is pretty strong, I must say, um, in terms of its users and things like that. From my understanding, again, I haven't looked into the, the actual statistics of it specifically relative to, you know, this quarter or this year. But PayPal seems to still be quite a strong uh, use of, of payment and stuff like that. So to see eBay trying to do their own thing, I mean, look, they have the, the clientele to do so. Right. I, I would imagine. I mean, they have the customer base that would just say, OK, as long as the payment system is smooth and fluid, that's all that people want. Right. It's just like it's like anything else in life. But it's like when you use your phone and you use an app that's really glitchy. It just doesn't feel right. And then you use an app that's very smooth and it works very well. Sort of like if you were to compare your texting app compared to Telegram or something like that. Generally speaking, Telegram seems to be a lot more um, smoother and, and, and fluid, if you will. So, you know. Uh, the next thing is that a drone crashed into an erupting volcano in Iceland. Okay, I don't even know why that was a story, but I just, okay. Uh, the next thing is that Instagram uh, changed its algorithm after the Gaza conflict, and the reason for this is because Instagram and Facebook were accused of suppressing and censoring pro-Palestinian messages during the recent Gaza conflict. Again, th this is... 
I'm not trying to say I told you so, especially not to you guys, but uh, in general, what I'm saying is that the, the, the connection that the Jewish culture, the Jewish businessmen, the Jewish people in, in many regards, not all regards, as I said a couple days ago, but in many regards, have with the United States government an influence and correspondence with Israel. And then if you tie in all the intelligence operations on the back end of things, it's it's too strong. Now, again, the people can rebel. And it seems like at this point in time, you know, the at least um, the, the Israeli people in America, the Jewish people in America, in terms of the lobbyists seem to be losing this battle because public opinion has swayed so much. With that being said, if even if things change on the front end, uh, you know, to favor Palestinians more, which you can make a very strong argument should be the case, but you could also make an argument the other way around. Um, the question then becomes, will things change on the back end? You know what I mean? Again, in, in terms of these Jewish businessmen wanting, you know, to show on a public level that Israel must be protected and things like that. Of course, every country should be protected. But the question becomes, how much are they, even the Mossad, how much are they willing to sacrifice a public front end um, label, if you will? to to get to get the masses all around the world off your back now don't get me wrong there are a lot of people defending israel as well too but there's also a lot of people that are upset in the way that particularly western companies specifically technology companies have seemingly suppressed pro-palestinian um uh, posts, videos, uh, things like that. So again, it's 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 tough. It's not it's not easy. I don't claim to have the answers. I don't think anyone else does either. But it's again, if the people are, have spoken, whether we agree with it or not, the people have spoken. But we also have to remember something too. We are the people at the same time, right? So the question then becomes: If there's so much outrage online, how many of them are bots? How many of them are real people? We have to ask ourselves this because the the game of propaganda has gone full full mainstream now at this point, whether it's the culture or all that, and I don't need to tell you guys, right? So the next thing is that Giovanni Brusca, an Italian mafia boss, was freed after 25 years in jail. Okay, this was the, the one, some of the top headlines for multiple uh, outlets and um, I guess you could say journalistic networks and if you want to call them that that i that i saw all across the board this morning that's when you know the news is trying to grasp for straws in terms of what they want to report on the fact that you have to report on a mafia boss in italy okay fine he spent 25 years in jail that's not a short period of time but again i mean look not to defend the guy but in the eyes of the legal system he did his time let's see what happens is he going to change probably not he'll probably go back to doing crime Honestly, that's that's what they do. And again, I come from an Italian background. Um, without getting too specific, uh, I'm I'm I've been familiar with some of these characters as some of these people. And uh, yeah, they they just it's just in their it's their life. If they want to commit crime, let them commit crime. I I don't know, but I mean that's a terrible way to look at it. I'm talking about crime that doesn't harm people, like you you know uh, screwing the government out of money and stuff like that. When it comes to shootings that end up having you know collateral damage and innocent people, very different story. Uh, the next thing, but ultimately, again, the, the system can only control so much. If people want to do what they want to do, I, I mean, you can't, you can't stop everybody, right? Unfortunately, that's the reality. The next thing is that a critic of the Kremlin, Andrei Pivovarov, hope, hopefully I didn't butcher his last name, was pulled off of a plane and arrested. Very simple, folks. This is Putin trying to make sure he doesn't become another Navalny. Very simple. I feel like, and I could be wrong, but based on my analysis, Putin didn't like the fact that he he let, he gave Navalny too much of a leash, if you will, and he doesn't want that to happen again. Very simple. And here's the thing. Who's going to do anything? I bet you the same thing's going to happen. The European leaders are going to call him out and say, we, we uh, you know, immediately demand you release him. Putin's not even going to reply. Nobody's going to, you know, nothing's really going to happen. The CIA is going to be quietly monitoring it from the back end, and that's it. I mean, I don't know what else will uh, will happen here, right? So, uh, the next thing is that Uganda minister's uh, daughter was murdered in a failed assassination attempt on her father, of course. Again, this is what I mean. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. I get it. Some parts are more dangerous than others. But it, like I said in the past few days, becoming a politician nowadays almost feels like becoming a, um, I guess you could say a, 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 a 
gangster or a spy or something like that because in the way that you have to move not just when your security is around you but when they're not around you the way you i know this sounds silly but it's true the way you turn corners the way you uh get out of your car when you walk to certain places you know uh when you eat at restaurants that generally politicians now have i've seen some photos of different politicians they generally tend to sit in you know a very strategically placed area of the restaurant now you might be saying dave it was always like this yes it was always like this for high level politicians but it's becoming like this for low level ones too now we can argue social media plays a big uh, factor in that because of the fact that you know it's now giving more publicity to these lower level politicians but again the problem still remains there's the violence they got to worry about so once you get elected and even while you're running too you have to make sure that you have uh, appropriate security around you because regardless of your political views you're not going to please everybody right so the next thing is that at least 50 people were killed in attacks in two dr congo villas again I feel like this could be stopped, and it could, it, in terms of if there were to be some type of intervention from a um, from another country or a powerhouse, if you will. I'm not saying all violence could be stopped. That's you know, I'm not trying to say let's make it a perfect world because we got to be realistic here. But at the same time, again, the reason why the West will not really intervene with African affairs, I mean, they do, but not as strongly as they would in the Middle East or what have you, is because there's nothing to gain there. It's it's very simple. They could easily end poverty. I, I very strongly, I mean, do you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but they could end poverty. And when I say they, I'm talking about the government, all those politicians who take those big salaries and those CEOs who take those big bonuses, they don't even need to give even, I think it's, I think the numbers were, they don't even need to give 5% of their paycheck and they could eliminate world poverty or world hunger or starvation or what have you. I mean, Bill Gates, Bill Gates in and of himself could end world starvation by donating a boatload of money and still be a billionaire after all of that. And I bet you he'd make all that money back too. But again, why won't he do it? Right? So again, it becomes political. The next thing is that Japanese researchers are using soybean compounds to turn male fish into females and females into males, vice versa. Again, this is, it's these little, I feel like it's these little forms of drop feeding that are coming to fruition about how all of a sudden scientific research and studies and experiments show, oh, you know, this can happen, that can happen, just from this, just from that, as if the, they didn't know secretly for years. Like, come on, right? Uh, but ultimately, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if this actually comes to fruition of any kind in the mainstream. Ultimately, when we look at, for example, in the past few years, Russian octopus hybrids, there were some rumors of that. Uh, to say that the these countries haven't been working on uh, some type of, you know, bioweapon, if you will, um, COVID being case in point, we could argue strongly, or just other type of other types of uh, biological natural weapons, uh, if you will, like creatures or mutated creatures or... Uh, uh, hybrid creatures. I mean, come on. They, they've tried many things. I am sure of it without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, the next thing is that a 61 year old woman living near Wuhan, the Wuhan lab may have in fact been patient zero. I don't, here's the thing. I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not an intelligence officer. I'm not a scientist, but I don't know what the benefit would be at this point from saying, oh, look, that was patient zero. I get it. You can study how the original transmission occurred. I understand that. With that being said, though, I mean, the world's already been through all this crap. So at this point, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that, right? So the next thing is that the first case of a human infection with the H1ON3 bird flu was recorded in China. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is uh, the CCP, depending on how strongly you take their word, says that the risk of this spreading is extremely low, but I, again, we got that between that and the mysterious black fungus in India and many other things. It's difficult, man. It, it really is. Uh, the next thing is that Peru now has the highest COVID death toll per capita, allegedly. See, this is my thing about about the lockdowns. I say I say forget the lockdowns, no matter what, because different countries keep taking uh, taking each other's place for the number one spot of, you know, uh, death tolls or infection rates per capita and blah, blah, blah. For me, I, my stance is very simple. Some of you may agree with me. Some of you may not. Open everything up. If people want to wear masks, let them wear masks. If they don't, then don't. Very simple. Very, very simple. Because the businesses that want to open up, they, maybe they might not make as much money as if, you know, before this all happened, but at least they'd still be open, right? And this whole thing of, you know, what's going on here in Canada, don't even get me started on that. But that's, again, you, you all know my stance on that. Every, do what you want. The people that want to quarantine or not go, sure, do what you want. But... 
you know, I, I'm very, I strongly believe in, for example, what's happening in Florida. If you want to quarantine, then, or if you want to wear a mask, by all means. If you don't, it's a free country, right? So, the next thing is that a recent study blames global warming for over one in three heat-related deaths on humans. Interesting, because aside from the actual study itself, this reminds me again of Charlie Chester, who was the who is the CNN one of the cameramen, I believe, or production managers who was caught on uh, on tape of Project Veritas um, going on an alleged Tinder date, and I say that with air quotes, um, and. He basically admitted he defined what he thought was propaganda and he basically admitted that CNN was doing propaganda. But he mentioned something in particular, which is that after Trump, he said the next narrative is most likely to be climate change. And again, lo and behold, all of a sudden, all of these, not just from CNN, by the way, all of these studies, all of these networks, not just within the West, but uh, even even around the world are all of a sudden talking about climate change. Now, with that being said, I really do believe that they could change I think secretly with the extraterrestrial technology that they have, they can, they can, assuming that climate change is real for the hypothetical case of this, this conversation, I think they could reverse this no problem. With that being said, the question might be how, would they have to do it on a mass level? So is that why they might be uh, slowly, you know, releasing the, or trying to disclose the extraterrestrial, uh, agenda or the extraterrestrial uh, presence, if you will. Now, there is one thing from my friend Riel, I'd like to thank him very much for pointing this out, that in General Philip Corso's book, and I mentioned his name a few times in the past, as some of you may know, one of the gentlemen and soldiers who was there at Roswell himself, he had said, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm quoting correctly, one of the other generals had mentioned that in terms of, is there going to be a disclosure for humanity? One of the generals said the overall plan is that the disclosure is the cover-up and the cover-up is the disclosure and that will slowly seep into the masses so again we'll see what happens that being said today's june 1st let's see if there's any if the pentagon it submits anything to rubio and congress publicly that's worth reading or noting or if it's nothing new again i'm not my expectations are not high whatsoever so we'll see what happens uh, the next thing is that Again, like I said earlier, there's a massive childhood malnutrition problem in Haiti, uh, in addition to allegedly the pandemic as well. Like I said, the problem could be fixed, but they won't do it. So, and when I mean they, it doesn't have to just be the West. I mean, Russia could do it. Germany could do it. I'm pretty sure. Right. So, uh, Australia could do it. I'm pretty sure. The next thing is that the rapper Lil Loaded had taken his own life at 20 years old. They're not saying officially what it was about, but from what I've been reading um, from different sources, he apparently was, uh, again, allegedly heartbroken, if you will, over a, a, a girl and she broke up with him and then he shot himself. Now, again, I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. That's what the speculation is by some alleged inside sources. I don't usually, as you all know, I don't usually spend time on pop culture and things like that. I just find it to be a, in a lot of ways, a lot of the mainstream uh, s s music and things like that to be a tool of the CIA, call me paranoid, what have you. Um, but ultimately, um, again, it's unfortunate. This is a, a mental health issue, just like that tennis player who withdrew from the open uh, because I forgot her name. I should have written it down. My apologies, guys, but forgot her um, who pulled up from the open due to mental health issues. Again, the mental health thing, I, li I like to view it as the, the same idea as the sexual assault allegation uh, whole thing. And what I mean by that is this. For those that have real mental health problems, it is a serious thing. I'm, I'm sure it's been going on for since humanity's been around, but it's just and it was never addressed, right? With that being said, all it takes is one person. I'm not saying this tennis player. I'm just saying in general, all it takes is one person to fake a mental health thing, and then you find out later they're faking it, and it ruins it for everybody. It's the same concept, at least to me personally, right? And it's unfortunate because the people that actually have it need genuine help. So, uh, you know, whether it's from family, friends or otherwise, right? So whether you're, you know, you're a veteran, you've seen things or you're just someone that's really, you know, struggling in life in your own world with problems or this, the stress is building up. It, it, this is life, you know, um, it just it just goes to show that even it, it gets to the best of us. It gets to the, to the worst of us. It, it's true. The next thing is that Belarus has banned most of its citizens from traveling abroad. Yeah, n no shit. I mean, did you see what happened with that plane last week or two weeks ago? I mean, come on. So I will, I, I'm not even going to comment about that. I, I've, 
we'll, we'll see what goes on there. <laughs> the next thing is that U.S. inflation sees its biggest jump since 2008, and the U.K. has seen a large inflation spike too. Again, I'm not an, ec uh, an economist or a macro economist for that matter, uh, let alone an economist, but this is this is interesting to see. We're seeing now Europe uh, beginning to adopt the digital wallet concept. Is this the fall of the dollar, if you will? The, the, it's up for debate. It really is. We're at a very interesting turning point. The question becomes, you know, there's speculation that crypto was, uh, the, the cryptocurrency concept was in fact introduced and curated and controlled right from the beginning. And if it wasn't, then it was taken upon the intelligence agencies shortly after. So... You know, we'll see what happens. There's a rumor as well that Putin was the one that very secretly created cryptocurrency so he can manipulate global markets if everyone dives into that. But I don't know how I haven't done research into that. I don't know how much I would buy into that. But the next thing is that Heinz tomato ketchup is going to be made in the uh, in the UK again. I thought I'd write that down and report that just because, you know, it's nice to bring up some kind of funny, positive-ish news in these episodes, right? Um, so that's kind of cool. Heinz is uh, going to be made in the UK. Nice, uh, again. Uh, and the final thing, and this made me laugh, my God, this is like Amazon's way of trying to say no to unions, but trying to still, quote-unquote, please their workers. Uh, Amazon did a wellness chamber thing. And so, okay, so I, I wrote that down really uh, improper. I'm sorry. They introduced in some of their factories something called a wellness chamber when you're on break or whatever. So first off, they barely get breaks from my understanding. But what is this wellness chamber? It's a box. It's literally a box. You go in, I believe it has a screen and it has different videos telling you how to de-stress, how to meditate. Really? Don't give them a box. If people want to unionize, let them unionize. Right? Like, I mean, it's, I don't know. You have Elon Musk talking about, I know that there's there's two sides to unions and things like that. I understand that. But, you know, Elon Musk is still calling for Amazon to be broken up and things like that. There's a big, big debate about Amazon. Another thing, too, that pisses me off as well is that Amazon got a $10 billion bail, uh, bailout for losing the contract or what have you to, uh, to, to SpaceX, if I'm not mistaken. And then they bought uh, MGM, which is the studio that owns all the rights to James Bond films merchandise all that he bought it for eight billion they so technically speaking if you want it the transactions happen within the same week or so i if i'm not mistaken technically speaking the u.s government paid for jeff bezos to buy james bond it's true i mean that's what they did so i i, I don't that's that's just i uh there's so many problems with this world. So anyways, I would like to thank all of you for uh, watching and listening and we'll catch you a little bit later on. Cheers.